You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. Introducing Royal Caribbean's newest ship, Icon of the Seas, the ultimate family vacation. The ultimate six slides, eight neighborhoods, zero compromise vacation. The ultimate never done that, can't wait to do it vacation. The ultimate chillin' by a different pool every day of the week vacation. This is the Icon of Vacations. Icon of the Seas, arriving in 2024. Book today. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. All right, welcome back to another episode of the Wisconsin Sports Rorks podcast on the Packernet Podcast Network. My name is Sam Holman, and I'm here with my co-host, McQuaid. McQuaid, how are you doing? Doing outstanding. Glad to have Packers football back and on a weekly basis. It's nice. Yeah, it's definitely good to be back. Um, And today was even better as a Packers fan. We got news that David Bakhtiari is off the pup list and practicing, though Obviously, he's not up in tier, team periods yet, just doing individual drill stuff. But still, that's that's really encouraging for someone who's, you know, kind of struggled. This has been a long injury, kind of a winding road back uh, for his recovery. But it's great to see him back out there. Yeah, and, and I think one of the biggest things, what we don't see as fans is is the rehab that goes into actually getting back out there. And all we hear is Matt LaFleur or whoever saying that he's been working his tail off to get out here. And, and we, we, you know, we can kind of piece that together as fans, but we don't really see it. But then we saw today at practice, you know, the, the offensive lineman kind of welcome, welcoming him back. Um, yeah. That was a video that the Packers posted. And then at, at the end of practice, Rob, Demo- Rob Novoski posted that he uh, broke down the, the, the huddle at the end and kind of gave an end of practice speech. So clearly he's, he's obviously supported and still viewed as a leader on that team. And it's always nice to see. Yeah, the, the other major piece of news with today's practice, uh, Christian Watson, he t- took part in his first team drills of the, I believe, the first that he's done in training camp so far. He did some in OTAs, but he's been recovering from that knee uh, surgery that he had, knee cleanup that he had, and so it was great to see him out there as well. Um, we're hoping, you know, while he took part in warm-ups before the preseason game uh, this past Friday, so, you know, there's there's a lot of signs that are, it, they're, they're pretty positive indicators that he could take part in this last preseason game before the regular season. I'd love to see that, you know, love to see what he can do with Jordan Love and some of the other receivers out there. It's been, uh, he was one of my favorite prospects that the Packers drafted. Um, I, had, you know, made a video about him breaking down his game uh, before the draft came out. So I've been a fan of his for a while, uh, but it, it'll be great to hopefully see him out there this week. Yeah, I think it's going to be, um, telling going forward, you know, what they do uh, in practice then into preseason week three um, for a lot of positions, but especially, you know, you know, Jordan Love and, and see in the future. Yeah, definitely. Um, before we, we were going to re- cover, kind of recap the this last preseason game, kind of touch on some people who stuck out to us or moments that stuck out to us. Before we do that, what is your prediction, you know, assuming that once David Bakhtiari and Elton Jenkins get back, What's your prediction for what the starting line is going to be? Because obviously Zach Tom has looked really good in the preseason, so you figure, you know, with there, there should be at least one spot up for grabs, whether they put Elton in tackle or guard, wherever they decide to slot him in, well, there should be another spot that's open for, for competition. You know, I think that you, the Packers have relied on rookies now for actually a few years, and I think that that could, be, could not be the case this year if – it works out a certain way where Bhatiari is obviously left tackle. Um, I actually am on board with putting Yash Nijman at right tackle. He played his whole senior year, 2018, at right tackle and did it did so you know fairly well. Um, and that allows you to move Elton Jenkins back to his true spot at left guard. You know, obviously Josh Myers is still the center, and then you just let it best man win. You know, for the guard position, and maybe that is a rookie, but I think that. Uh, John Runyon Jr. has showed a lot of promise at that at that guard position. And, um, you know, for the first time in a few years, Green Bay may not have to rely on a rookie. Now, week one, I do think, you know, week one, two, three, I think that there is a possibility of, of seeing uh, some rookies play. And, and I think yeah. that speaks speaks to Adam Senevich and also our ability to draft rookies. But um, I think by week 18, they're, they're very well could not be a rookie on that starting offensive line. 
Yeah, that's definitely an outcome I could see as well. I mean, I think Zach Tom, if he's going to be on the starting line, it's going to be a tackle. I'm not sure. He, he's a lighter player, and even at tackle, he was, you know, he struggles sometimes to get to stand up against the power that he gets from some edge rushers. And I'm not sure he would be able to survive on the inside very well, just given given his his lighter, you know, weight, some of the struggles he has against power. Um, so I think that if he's going to be on the starting line, he's going to probably be at tackle, probably right tackle, because uh, that's because left tackle is going to be manned by David Bakhtiari, hopefully yep. early in the season onward. Um, if the Packers, I, I think it is a possibility that they want to put Elton in, at guard. Um, one possible line could be, you know, Bakhtiari, Runyon, Myers, Elton, and then Zach Tom from left to right. Uh, but if they want to put Elton at right tackle, which is another possibility I could definitely see happening, um, I do wonder that the competition between Royce Newman and Jake Hansen is going to be really interesting to watch because they've been kind of switching up. Uh, Jake Hansen has spent some time at center as well. It kind of feels like they want to turn him into the new Lucas Patrick, just kind of a versatile interior guy. Um, but that, that'll, that'll be an interesting battle to watch because both of them have had some nice moments. Both of them have also had some struggles. Yeah. Um, you know, to be honest with you, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what what the offensive line looks like. Like you like you mentioned, I, I do like Jake Hansen. I, I like what he's um, done so far, and and you, you know Sean Ryan and Zach Tom have both shown promise um, at their respective positions, and 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 versatile, right? They're, they've shown that they can probably play more than one position. Um, I just I think there is a gap this year. To be honest with you, I think there's a gap this year between. You know, veteran starters who who've been in the year, league for a few years, and and what the rookies could bring. And that's not to say anything negative about the rookies, but sure. if 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 we get to that lineup where you know what I just mentioned, you know, Yasmin at right tackle and Batiari, and then Elton Jenkins playing his true position, and and then John Runyon Jr. at the right guard, I don't think that there's a better five out there on this team currently than those five starting all healthy. And I think that that once again could be rivaled for one of the best offensive lines in football. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll definitely be interesting to see what they do with Yash. I mean, he's he spent, you know, obviously, like you said, he spent a lot of time at right tackle before coming into the NFL. Seems like since then he's mostly been at left tackle. So, let's, yep. you know, yep. it'll be very interesting to see, you know, how the Packers view him, how they want to work that out. But that'll be, that'll be something to watch moving forward. But ultimately, I mean, you got to be happy right now as a Packers fan. You, any line that has David Bakhtiari and Elton Jenkins coming back, you know, doesn't really matter where they fit in it's a that's a good problem to have where you want to slot in like I, I, an all pro versatile lineman like elton jenkins but you know that that's for the future obviously we don't know what the status will be for week one kind of moving forward obviously the packers feel pretty optimistic otherwise they wouldn't have taken them off uh the pup list right that would have allowed them to stash them uh without counting against their their roster count um up up until four weeks into the season i believe there are the new rules um but with, with them off the pup, they, they anticipate them get, getting on that line pretty early. Uh, it'll be something to watch. Um, but what, what we were going to do, you know, after, after covering that, just going to go over the preseason game, kind of, you know, recap what happened, some of, some of the guys that stuck out to us. I think that the headliner, you know, he's gotten a lot of press. I think the headliner has to be Jordan Love. He looked fantastic in this game. You know, the, those balls where it's just kind of – iffy you know he's just kind of flinging it up there under pressure those were pretty much gone I mean the decisions he made they were all good um even when his throws were not super accurate he had some short throws that were that were kind of iffy uh especially kind of there was a lull in the middle of the game where he struggled a little bit in that regard but even then he he wasn't putting the ball in danger I think he was going through his reads well he was scrambling when he needed to and just some of the throws he made were fantastic well, wh- what did you see from Jordan Love's performance uh so I wrote an article and it kind of got so, some backlash on on social media but um I said th- I said he put on an absolute clinic versus Saints and and you know a lot of comments were or you know 12 of 24 and 100 and 24 yards, I believe it was, or something like that, and one touchdown, and and uh, it was very easy to pick apart his his um, box box stats, right? You know, it was yeah. very easy to pick that up, pick that apart. But man, I think that that his adjusted through his first two games, I saw a stat where his, his adjusted um, completion percentage because he has had eight drops so far in preseason is like 70 percent completion, 
Um, I think he's obviously had those three touchdowns. One of them, I think we can, we, this was against the, the 49ers. I think one of them, you can, you can, you know, right. Why does he ran the wrong route on that one play, but still could have, but could have been a better thrown ball. Yeah. Uh, but two of the others were completely not his fault. You know, that, that everyone can agree on that. Uh, just strictly bounced off the wide receiver's hands uh, outside of that. Maybe that one turnover worthy play that was the interception. Um, he is balled out this preseason and we saw some accuracy on some throws against the the Saints that and that, I, what I said in the article is they were Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers level accuracy. I mean there was one where he rolled out the pocket to his weak side and threw it out of bounds but to the only position where a, where a wide receiver could make the catch and the wide receiver almost did make the catch. I say out of bounds where the ball was traveling out of bounds but it was in the perfect position for his wide receiver to have his feet in bounds and make the touchdown catch. Um and it just bounced off the wide receiver's hands, and that's just that's one of those plays. It was it kind of reminded me of that Jared Cook, Jared Cook uh, throw against the Cowboys, you know, a few years ago in the playoffs. Um, that that type of throw out of bounds. But I, I think that he's developing to a quarterback that is going to do one of two things for us. It's going to allow us to buy into the Jordan Love hype when and if Aaron Rodgers does hang up the cleats in the next couple of years. Right, we're going to see enough to be like, hey, we don't know if 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 Jordan Love. It can win us a Super Bowl, but we've seen enough to not give up on that hope, right? Yeah. Or we're going to get some tor- some type of you know long term commitment, long term being maybe three or four years from Aaron Rodgers, right? And he's going to do enough for us to get a decent haul in a trade package. One of those two things, I think Jordan Love is going to play himself into, and we're going to see more of that in preseason week three. And then I think I think there are going to be some times, you know, in this 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 regular season where we see Jordan Love. I don't know if it's going to be meaningful minutes, whether it's a blowout or, or uh, one way or another, but I do think we'll see him in the regular season one, once or twice. And, and yeah. that'll, that'll, he looks night and day different from last year to this year. Oh yeah, totally. I mean, his, his confidence, you know, like, like I mentioned, the, the ability to not just throw the ball up when he's under pressure, just those YOLO balls, he, those are seem gone, right? Even when he was under pressure this year, I think the throw you were mentioning um, where he was, you know, rolling out to his left, he was dodging some Saints defenders, threw the ball into the end zone where only his receiver could get it. I think it was Patrick Taylor who it went right through Patrick Taylor's hands. You know, it it would have been a pretty tough catch, obviously, uh, especially for a running back. But still, it's just it was an Aaron Rodgers-esque throw like the, the talent that we saw in college. It's showing up. Like we've been waiting, you know, they, we've been waiting for years to see this, but it's it's coming. Um, and then another another throw that stuck out to me, I, I, another incomplete throw, um, was another one. He was rolling out to his left. It was a it was a boot action play. Um, he's got Samari Toure who just beat his man down the left sideline, and he throws the ball. And from what I remember, the play it's you know single eye coverage. The safety is actually he's screaming over the top of the throw. Jordan Loves puts it right in the spot where the safety cannot intercept it. And that's a throw right. If he hesitates a second longer, that's not going to be open anymore. But he hits it on time. It's exactly where it needs to be. And it's like 30 yards down the field. It's not an easy throw. So just the stuff like that, you know, it's – it's you, you got to get excited about that. You know, the whether or not Jordan Love, he's going to be the starter for the future – I don't know if that's still the Packers' plan. There's obviously stuff still up in the air with Aaron Rodgers' status. But, man, it, it's just exciting to see. It's just great to see a young player like him who's struggled a bit have success. Yeah, and, and I don't know if you're know if you listening to this. Maybe you, you'll recall it or not. But there was a time uh, a few years ago where Tony Romo was announcing a play, and I believe it was against the Cincinnati Bengals, that um, Green Bay was at home and Aaron Rodgers made a throw before the safety could get there. And Tony Romo on verbatim on air was that Aaron Rodgers is one of, about one of two people on planet earth that could make that throw. And it was that exact situation where it was looking off the safety just long enough to throw the ball back across the field to his wide receiver streaking down the field, probably 20 or 30 yards down the field. And I'll, I'll always remember that, that, that commentary by Tony Roma, cause it was just, you know, sp- spoke volumes, Aaron Rodgers accuracy. And I'm not saying that's what Jordan love is right now, or even what that, what this play was, but Jordan Love being able to look off the safety is another, you know, uh, underrated development that we've seen this year. And, and it's been talked about on Twitter and, and social media is his ability to look off the safety and look off defenders longer than he has in the past and then be able to come back to his receiver and make a throw. Um, that is absolutely huge for quarterback development. Seeing that this year is 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 
um, really nice, really nice to see. So yeah, what we know, what, what happens in the future, we, we don't know, but we're definitely trending in the right direction for Jordan Love. And I think we are um, a lot, a lot, a lot quicker than some Packers fans are willing to admit. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, you love to see it. Um, obviously any, I, I think a, if, if you're a true Packers fan, then any you're you should be rooting for any young player who's got the talent that Jordan Love has. Rooting for them, you're rooting for them to succeed, right? Obviously, it's best for the team, it's best for the player. I think that this is this is a case where you know Love is starting to unlock some of, some of that infinite potential that people raved about during the draft. You know, there were questions about his decision making, you know, some, some sporadic accuracy, but everyone you know talked about his arm talent and. If he's able to unlock that at the NFL level, it's, it'll be exciting to see what he turns into. Um, moving on to some of the other aspects of the game, what what were some players or moments that stuck out to you? You know, I said it last week, I believe, and I'm gonna say it again this week. The the not only is defensive line uh, all of a sudden a strength of this defense, but so is inside linebacker, and I cannot wait to see it in full action. We've got Devondre Campbell, obviously Quay Walker, who we've seen you know go through some rookies rookie struggles but he's he you can see the talent there but oh my goodness isaiah mcduffie is jumping out the screen to me he's probably my favorite uh he's my favorite player so far of the offseason you know of of non-starters you know kind of kind of um diamond the rough isaiah mcduffie is making plays left and right um he is he's going to make make it hard for for green bay to I think what, what a big debate right now is is taking six or seven wide receivers right into the regular season or taking, you know, four or five linebackers, right? And Isaiah McDuffie, I think, has solidified the four linebackers for sure because it's going to be yeah. him and Chris Barnes along with the other two I just mentioned. But if they like a third inside linebacker or a fifth inside linebacker, there's, they, they might take that over a sixth or seventh wide receiver because, I mean, there's – yeah, I'm gonna go on a limb and say that Isaiah McDuffie is a lock to make the 53. I'm I'm in love with what he with what I'm, what I'm seeing on the field. Um, he's he's been a, a, a leading tackler, I think, in at least one of the preseason games so far. And the other one, he was number two. Um, yeah. Either way, right? He has been incredible to watch, and I, I love seeing him play. Yeah, he he was like you said, he's a lot of fun to just watch. You know, he flies around out there. Um, he had a couple really nice plays. Uh, one of them was a on a third and long I believe you know the quarterback was scrambling out he tracked the quarterback down and just laid down a massive hit on him it's pretty that was really awesome to watch another another play I think it was another third and long he sniffed out a wide receiver screen and just tackled the the receiver for little to no gain um it's really cool to see you know him kind of stepping up um and you know you mentioned Chris Barnes Barnes was making some plays too he uh He had a really nice, I believe it was on a wide receiver or a running back in the flat, laid a really nice hit on them, um, had a really nice forced incompletion uh, against a running back, I believe. Um, those, those inside linebackers, they are not, they, they're not sitting down and, and uh, accepting the uh, Quay Walker ascendance, um, even even though I think that he's, you know, hands down the starter. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's exciting to see, right? You know, we, like you mentioned, we finally have depth at linebacker and then defensive line. It's again, they had, they had a lot of success. Uh, Ian book, uh, the quarterback for much, pretty much all of the game, actually. Um, he scrambled a lot. Otherwise the Packers defensive line probably would have had four or five sacks. They were getting some good pressure. Chris Slayton was another guy who stuck out. Uh, he got pressure a couple times. He had one sack that was called back for illegal hands to the face on Jack Heflin, which was a an iffy call, but we don't need to go into that. Um, <laughs> and then Kingsley uh, and Agbar, he was wrecking stuff, man. There were there were some clips going around. I posted some. He was beating Trevor Penning, uh, the left tackle that the Saints picked in the first round this year. Beat him a couple times. Uh, There's another play where he was going against the right tackle. He had a awesome ghost rush where he faked, I think it was either a, a long arm or a cross shot move and then just dipped under the tackle and slid and then got back up and tra- tra- tried to started chasing the quarterback that those two players. I mean, I think that Enigmari is, is a lock at this point, right? He's shown, he's probably been the best outside linebacker the Packers have had on the field for both of these preseason games. And then Chris Slayton, he's going to make it hard for the Packers to keep him off the roster. You know, they've got the starting five, but he could easily force them to keep a six with how he's playing. 
No, I, I love what you said about uh, Kingsley and and Igbari, and and I, I think he's going to be one of the most appreciated players that don't show up on the stat sheet, right? He, my goodness, I saw I, exactly what you're talking about two or three or four times during this last game where where he beat his guy, right? And 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 he didn't get the sack. He didn't. He didn't. He probably was a quarter as, as a quarterback pressure, obviously, but he flushed the quarterback out of the pocket and made him force him to make a throw earlier than he wanted to. Um, and you just see his motor consistently where he does not stop on a play. He does not quit on a play. Kingsley Anagbari is going to be the guy that comes in on in a rotational spot, maybe a third, third long where Rashawn Gary or Preston Smith is just gassed and he forces Kirk Cousins or whoever it is to step up in the pocket and make a throw maybe a little bit sooner than he wants. I'm not going to guarantee the sack, but I guarantee you that, that Kingsley Anagbari is going to be the, he's going to make his presence known. And eventually this 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 is the first step of it, right? This is what you want to see, and then eventually those those pressures will turn into sacks. You can you can kind of compare it exactly to what Rashawn Gary was a few years ago as rookie. Yeah. You 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 saw the, the flash, you saw the highlights, you saw the physical tools were there. They just hadn't been put together, and now we're seeing it put together. And he's going to be one of the best pass rushers in the league this year. Um, no, I'm all about Kingsley Anigbar. I think that he's he's also um, showing a lot of 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 potential at that edge rusher position. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm excited to see what he brings. Uh, the Packers a couple times was they rolled out some packages where they had three outside linebackers on the field and one defensive lineman. Um, obviously, none of the starters were out there at outside linebacker, but that that's a package you could see them turning to if they want to get Enigbari, Preston, and Gary on the field at the same time. That's a that's an exciting pass rush trio right there. Yeah, and and you know we don't know what we have beyond that, but those are the top three dudes that are really coming in and make, making a, a presence. And then it, it's, it's going to be real easy on them when they can't be double teamed because you've got Kenny Clark and Jaron Reed and Devontae <laughs> White all in the middle doing their thing. Yeah, I uh, I tweeted out just kind of some musing about the the pass rush unit. There's probably 10 guys you can you can count on to get pressure, right? You've obviously got Rashawn Gary, Preston, Anik Bari. Uh, you got Kenny Clark, Jaron Reed, Dean, and then you throw in Dean Lowry. TJ Slayton has been doing some really nice stuff in pass rush. Um, and then Devontae Wyatt, the, the Packers first rounder. Uh, and then you throw in, you know, Chris Slayton. He may make the roster. He was getting pressure, like I mentioned. There's just a lot of exciting pass rushers. And then you could throw in you know, uh, Devontae Campbell and Quay Walker. I, I think that the, the Joe Barry is going to use both of them to rush the passer and kind of, kind of get after the, the quarterback, uh, disrupt some plays uh, as blitzers and, and doing, doing that sort of thing. It's going to be exciting to watch, man. This front seven could be the best in the in the NFL, and I don't think that's that's too much of a stretch. Yeah, and I think that that's a you know that's a key to how the when, how the Packers are going to unlock a path to the Super Bowl, right? We've seen in the past uh, the especially like the the 2017 Eagles come to mind, right? Where they had Nick Foles at quarterback and just a, a monster of a defensive line, and that defensive line just the pressure it got in the postseason <clears throat> really helped lead them to a, to a Super Bowl win. You know, Nick Foles obviously played great and, you know, give him credit for that, but they, they lean on that defensive line a lot. And I think that, you know, the Packers, they have a great quarterback in Aaron Rodgers, but there are some questions at wide receiver. And I think that with a pass rush as deep and as talented as they have, I think that that could be a really, a really important part of how they, how they could reach a Super Bowl. You know, and, and it kind of going a little bit, a little bit sidebar right now, but talking about how good this defense is, right. And the depth that we maybe maybe not have at at um, all these positions, I think right now still we're sitting at safety and cornerback is you know questionable positions. However, Shamar Jean Charles, right? I want to highlight him real quick because he has been not okay. First of all, he's been playing playing his lights so out. He's been playing great, right? I get it. It's been against preseason guys and people who may may not make the roster, but he in of itself has been playing great. But the one play that I saw highlighted, I think, is this past game against the Saints where he was called for defensive pass interference. And in my opinion, right, my, you know, I'm not an NFL ref, I'm not a coach, but my my opinion, he ran the route better than the wide receiver did <laughs> and got called for a flag for it. That's what I, that's how I interpret that play. He, and that's just one example. He's He's been great. So we're seeing players pop at these positions that we need depth at. Um, and I think as of right now, you know, maybe the only the biggest left uh, unanswered question is going to be safety. But we are seeing guys step up at every other position. 
Yeah, totally. Uh, like you mentioned, John Charles was, he's been fantastic. I mean, and they the cool thing is they've been playing him both outside and in the slot. Um, I think his best tape has come in the slot, but he's made some really nice plays outside as well. That play you mentioned where he, he locked down the receiver and got called for a questionable PI, uh, that was outside. Um, the, the play before that actually springs to mind. He shut down Chris Olave, the, another Saints first-round pick. Um, so that, that was really exciting. He's been doing some really nice stuff. He did some really nice stuff against the 49ers. I think that he's, he's kind of their fourth cornerback because even if he's best in the slot, you've also got the, your other three guys can all play outside. So you've got some outside depth. The depth that you really need is in the slot, um, or the depth that you, where the place where you mostly need depth is in the slot. Um, another guy I want to bring up, Keandre Thomas. Uh, he's been making, he's been playing pretty well this, this past game. He was targeted three or four times and I don't think he allowed a completion. Um, he had a really nice play, uh, in, in trail coverage. He was, he was shadowing an over route and just caught up to the receiver and knocked the ball away. It was a really, really great play on the ball, really great, co- really great coverage rep. So he could be, he could be making some noise as well. Um, especially if he can contribute to special teams. I think that that um, I'm glad you brought out special teams because the the one little gripe that I wanted to that I wanted to to bring up right and talk about is is that this you know bringing in Riz Pisacci, right and hey okay so far from from what we've seen right as fans and social media and I get it which is probably just a, just a snippet of what actually is out there but special teams is is, is turning the corner just in the sense of they've they've stopped being bad right they've they've at least leveled off and they're attempting to be just competent right however part of that i think is go- it needed to be and needs to be the 12 men on the field then the 10 men on the field those are the mental errors that risk Pisaccia. i mean he probably is risk Pisaccia is probably beside himself when it happened he probably laid into him the next day of practice he, he probably did that's the kind of culture we've gathered it's what he is but and I get his preseason; it's only the second time they've ever been live with Chris Masaccia. But, but man, like those are the things you just, you just, you cannot see and do not want to see during um, the regular season, right? We we have gone seasons. I'm talking multiple seasons in a row where where any NFL team has never been called for for ten men on or ten men on the field or twelve men on the field on, on a special teams play. That is something that that kind of has, has become a regular thing for the Packers at least the last year or two. And I mean, we're talking team, other NFL franchises who have gone seasons, literal seasons, without ever getting that 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 call a single time. So there is a way to make it not happen. And I think that that first focusing on that is 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 that can't be a, a, a okay thing. That can't be just just oh that happens sometimes in Green Bay. It can't be right. And Rispasaccia is supposed to be the dude that turns that part of it around. Um, and I'm not gonna. I'm not even close to giving up on Rich Pisaccia, right? But I, I just I don't want to. We've seen it once or twice now in the preseason already. I don't want to see it, you know, come week one. Yeah, no, I I, I totally agree. Um, one one interesting thing I kind of noted as I was thinking about that Dallin Levitt, the safety that the Packers brought over from the Raiders, he you know, with the Packers, um, he was their pump protector, and usually that that person's job is to count and make sure that the the special teams, the punt unit, has enough men on the field or they don't have too many men on the field. Um, I think that with Dallin out, they maybe there was maybe some some issues with that. It looked like Tyler Goodson had kind of taken over his role. So hopefully, as Goodson or whoever is appointed to that role, as they adjust to their responsibilities, hopefully that gets straightened out. Like you said, I'm sure Basaccia absolutely laid into whoever was responsible in the film room and you know tried to do every. They're trying to do everything they can to make sure they don't make that mistake again. And hopefully they won't. Um, I think it's definitely worth watching in this this next preseason game. Um, but yeah, they, they got to get that straightened out. Uh, I mean, you you can make excuses, but ultimately it's next man up. They got to know their responsibilities and and adjust and and uh, fulfill those. Um, I'm trying to think. Were, were there any other notable moments um, that that you kind of saw or players that you wanted to uh, single out as uh, performing well or poorly? No, I, 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 I'm just going to go over two quick duds real quick, you know, that I'm not going to spend too much time on them, but I think that tight end Tyler Davis is doing everything he can to not make the roster real unfortunate. The, uh, the, uh, um, coach staff was real high on him, but he has just not, not at all had a good two preseason games and, uh, 
I don't see him making the roster, even if he does have a good third preseason game. And then Amari Rogers, right? I think that this is going to be a wait, more of a wait and see than anything else. There's no way I'm going to just write the book on Amari Rogers, kind of like I just did Tyler Davis. However, you, you know, I want to see, I see a little bit, more, I see quickness. I see, I see more gadgetry out of Amari Rogers. I see him be a little bit faster this year, and a little bit, you, you know, I see him be that right. Uh, his yeah. burst is a little bit more right, but I I don't know if he's if he's it so to speak for returner for playing the true wide receiver position, and that's what I think we need to see more of this year. I, I don't know. It, 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 he he kind of reminds me of kind of maybe like a Tavon Austin. It's just, so right now, anyways, Tavon Austin, you know, a, a gadget player. Uh, he was labeled the wide receiver, but I don't know how often you would actually line up Tavon Austin on the perimeter and have him actually go run a route and 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 rely on him for you know what i mean you you, you kind of relied on Tavon austin's for those reversed um reverses or or just a quick screen or something like that and then yeah. he was obviously the return guy so i'm I'm not sold on amari rogers yet I, I think that he's definitely better than last year but um in, in the sense of his physical tools right i just i don't know if i've seen enough yet to see to make to be sold on him for a wide receiver you know even three on, on this offense yeah, I, I totally agree on Tyler Davis. I mean, it seems like he's trying his best to play his way off the roster, like you mentioned. I mean, I think there there's an unlikely path, but I think there is a path where he could, you know, kind of turn things around this third preseason game. If he, you know, pancakes George Karloftis a bunch of times, gets 150 yards receiving and two touchdowns, you know, maybe then he he's going to be on the roster. But unless the Packers staff is a lot more optimistic about him than we are, it, it's hard to see him making it, especially when there were guys like, you know, even like Sal Canella, the guy they picked up from the USFL, he had a really nice catch and run for like 10 yards. And that's more than we've seen from Tyler Davis in two preseason games. Heck, yeah, even uh, Alizé Mack, or Elise Mack, I'm not sure how his name is pronounced, number 47, he was he made some nice blocks. That there, Those guys, you know, I don't think there's any there's much separating Davis from, from even, you know, Mack, right, who's – just kind of been a fourth quarter, you know, one of one of the you know last round of backups type thing. Yeah, and I mean, and like you said, you know, the one catch that I think Tyler Davis did have that that um had uh, it was a four or five yard gain could have gone down, and, and it would it would have been a good confidence builder play. He fumbles it, and that was kind of I think that may have been the nail the proverbial nail nail in the coffin. We don't we don't know for sure yet, but. Man, that was that was really rough to see. So, yeah, everything you're saying about Tyler Davis and 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 what he isn't doing, and compared to the, to the little things that even someone who's just playing the US, USFL is doing, um, you know, just does not bode well for him. And it, and it's really unfortunate, you know, you know, but uh, sometimes it's the nature of the beast. Yeah, and before we kind of close things out, I just wanted to take a quick break for ads. Um, so we'll be right back. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news, so don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's Us Days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us Days at U.S. Cellular, exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. This episode is brought to you by Hyperice, the leader in advanced warm-up and recovery technology. They have tons of innovative products, like Venom-heated wearables to help soothe sore back muscles, Normatec compression boots to speed up recovery and increase circulation, and Hypervolt massage guns to improve mobility. Loved by athletes like Naomi Osaka and Erling Holland. Try them yourself. Get 10% off your order with the code MOVE at hyperrice.com. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda, you never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, price line. It's only a kick. A jump. A block. It's only a serve. It's only a tackle. A run. It's only for the fans. 
After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. All right, we are back to uh, close out this this episode. Um, and we'll, one other thing I wanted to mention before we go, I think Tyler Goodson looks really nice. Uh, he catching the ball, running the ball. He's got some serious speed, some really nice a, bit, a really nice ability to make cuts. Um, I think that he he's a guy who, at the very least, you know, with Kylan Hill out, um, I think he's separated separated himself from Patrick Taylor and some of the other guys. I think he's our RB three uh, as of right now. No, you're 100 percent right. The, Tyler Goodson is is running back three as of right now. He's he's got to be locked in at it, and and uh, he's going to do his 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 damnness to to get uh, Kylan Hill to the practice squad, and, and I mean that in in the, the nicest way because man, it is going to be tough to decide between those two. Tyler Goodson has looked every bit of an NFL running back. Um, his his decision making, his quickness, his his power is all there. Um, it's, it's Potential to be a, a pretty stacked, you know, running back group for the Packers, and that already includes, you know, if not the best one-two punch in the league, their top two or three best one-two punch running backs in the league. Um, and I don't think that's debatable. So to see Tyler Goodson make the impact that he is and kind of wall off that that position for himself is 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 pretty uh, pretty nice for this Packers offense, and he can catch the ball, which is big yeah. for Packers running backs. So. Yeah, definitely. And the, the kind of the cool thing about him that separates him a little bit from guys like Patrick Taylor, he's he's different than the top two backs that they have, right? Aaron Jones, shifty guy, can catch the ball really well. A.J. Dillon, he's a power guy. Obviously, he's got speed. He can catch the ball well Yeah, in, in addition. But I don't think either of, them ha- either of them have just the pure speed that Tyler Goodson does. And I think that that's something that could, you know, you mentioned um, some of the gadget guys that they've had in the past uh, who, you know, been returners, whatever. Um, Tyler Grutzen could provide some of that where they use him on jet sweeps. You know, if Murray Rogers gets hurt or, or that sort of thing, they he, they could use him as depth there and just on screens and short, short throws, runs. You know, he can he can get a lot of yards after a catch with that with that speed. So I, I think that kind of that that additional element could really add something special to this Packers running back room, which in my opinion was already one of the better ones in the league. Yeah. And, and for you to, for you to say that, right. About the, the speed, you know, Aaron Jones is no slouch when it comes to speed. Yeah. I don't, I don't care what his, his 40 time is. I honestly don't know what it is off the top of my head, but you see him fly on the field. I mean, he will outrun defenders on the field. Um, The first play that comes to mind is, is that, that, run from the shotgun formation against the Minnesota Vikings a few years back to, to seal the win and seal the division, you know, in that win. So I believe that was in 2019 or, or either way, it was a few years ago. And um, so, yeah, I mean, that was, that was big. That was, and, and so to, for, to, to say that Tyler Goodson may have speed that, that, that beats that is, is pretty eye opening. Um, and we've seen it now on the field and which is, I think is, is huge. It's way different than just running a 40 yard dash time. So um they they've got a lot of versatility, a lot of different weapons, in the, all in that all in that uh, that running back group. And then you know, like what Aaron Rodgers said, you know, fifty fifty club for Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon. He's talking fifty yeah. receptions for both of them this season is very realistic. You know, if they're if they're out there lining up to catch balls or catch passes, uh, we're gonna see possibly Tyler Goodson. You know, get a, get some r- actual real time at the at the traditional running back spot because. They're having Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon line up every which way um, to make the offense more more dynamic. Yeah, def- definitely. Um, moving on to this upcoming week, the Packers are playing against the Chiefs on Thursday at uh, I believe it'll be uh, seven p.m. Lambo time. Um, what are some stuff you're going to be? What's some things you're going to be keeping an eye on? Some players, you know, themes, that kind of thing that, that you're going to be watching as that game progresses. I think that this is going to be – it's either going to be the most meaningful or the least meaningful of the preseason game um, in that, you know, we, we have no idea who's going to be starting yet. Uh, if starters are going to play, it is going to be in this game. That's all that's been talked about all preseason long, that if if players – if starters are going to play, it will be in the final preseason game. Um, and that will include players like Aaron Rodgers, obviously, possibly – you know, Elton Jenkins, if he's up for it, if he's able to to go, 
poss- big question mark, possibly David Bautiara, who we mentioned earlier, is just activated off the pup list today. But then you've got guys like Christian Watson. You know, he hasn't played a single snap yet because he's been, you know, on that pup list. He had that, that surgery to repair his knee. Cl- clearly, very minor surgery because it's been a few weeks and he's back yeah. in the lineup and catching passes and activated off, activated off the pup list himself. So, um, there, we're going to see a lot of guys, you know, possibly for the first time. And that, and then that, you know, who else does that include? That includes Sammy Watkins for the first time in a Packers uniform in real, you know, live reps, even though it's preseason. And and or right, they're not going to do any of that. They're going to they're going to take away what what they did from joint practices, rely on you know practice you know training camp and or I should say practices for the rest of you know the couple of weeks, and then roll into week one. Um, and that th- that is the other interesting aspect of it, right? Is that Aaron Rodgers is his said and he's proven he hasn't played preseason since i think 2019 um and he that includes the last two seasons when he's won back-to-back mvp so clearly he doesn't need preseason right however he said that if he were to play preseason to quote unquote let him play in the sense of he doesn't see any benefit of one drive or two drives going on the field right. if you're gonna let him play or if, he, if he's gonna play you know play a quarter play a half even right and and obviously you're, you're gonna design it a lot of quick throws a lot of a lot of just get the bottom of his hand real quick because you're not going to have long developing play action throws that, that you know, would keep the ball in his hand for a long time and risk a possible sack or injury or what have you, right? They're, they're going to use or create their game plan to not have the ball in Aaron Rodgers' hand for very long, which is smart, obviously. Um, but if he's out there, you know, he's going to want to be out there for a significant amount of time, which can be beneficial. But, man, every snap, Packers fans be holding their breath. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. You know, we've seen quite a few injuries actually happen just in the past few days. Uh, Buc- Buccaneers guard Aaron Staney went down with a season-ending injury. I believe uh, last night the Vi- in the Vikings preseason, preseason game, their, their promising rookie corner, Andrew Booth, went out with an injury. Still don't know exactly what's going on with him. Um, but it, that'll definitely the, the starters playing time, if they get any, will be something I think most Pac- Packers fans will definitely be wanting to watch. Um couple things I want I want to keep an eye on obviously you met you touched on Christian Watson it seems like signs are good uh, pointing towards a, a possible preseason debut in, in the Chiefs game um, I want to see you know how, how is he used is he running routes well is he understanding what he needs to do in the offense because that's kind of the big question with him missing so much time does he have the mental grasp of what he needs to do Um it, he and the nice thing about Watson is he's the kind of guy you can just tell you go go run a post and we'll throw it to you deep every once in a while. Um, he can he can be used as a guy who can just win with his speed. You can give him the ball and just let him get run after catch on jet sweeps or short screens. Um, but I, I'll be curious to see you know if they do use him that way or if they want him running a, a fuller route tree uh, and also how much is he used? You know, is he fully recovered? How will he look? You know how much will, can they use him in the Vikings game? Uh, at the start of the season. Other guy I want to watch is Devontae Wyatt. Um, he he did have his preseason debut on Friday. Um, it was a little bit lackluster. Uh, he, he struggled a bit. He didn't really make, make much of an impact. Um, from what it looked like to me, it looked like he was just adjusting to the speed of the game. You know, he was just kind of getting used to what it's like in the NFL. So hopefully you come in this week, you see him get, get some more impact make some more impactful plays, make some plays in the run game, get some pass rush in there, um, and, and kind of just see a, a bigger impact from him. So th- those are kind of the main things I want to watch besides, like you mentioned, the, the starters playing. Uh, McQuaid, before we get out of here, was there anything else you wanted to touch on? Yeah, no, I, I just want to kind of reiterate what you were just talking about with Christian Watson. Um, the biggest thing that I kind of want to look for when I see him on the field, whether it's week one or whether it's on Thursday this week, is – what he looks like physically compared to the opposing, um, the opposing defense, the opposing players, right? I, I, he is a freak of nature physically, right? His his RAS score was what relative athletic score was is what the, the the term is for for the draft it was off the charts. It was nine point nine. Some of them had him ten point oh. We're talking, you know, Randy Moss and 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 Calvin Johnson type of of RAS scores that just you are a physical freak of nature and you mean that in the best way possible so how yeah. does that translate to the field is he really faster than the people around him is he really you know you know he's, he's a big dude so do you see it when he's on the field i did that's kind of the biggest thing i want to look for is is how does christian watson look on the field like you mentioned right is he, is he understanding the playbook is he doing the, the, the right things right that's obviously a big part of it but 
one of one of the biggest reasons why they took him is because of his physical traits. And I want to see yeah. what that looks like on the field on Thursday, if it, if it happens on Thursday. But no, that yeah. was it. I think we covered a lot. Yeah, I, I don't really have anything else to add to that. Um, so, everyone, thanks for listening to the Wisconsin Sports Heroics podcast. Uh, you can join. You can find us pretty much every week. Uh, usually, we have podcasts coming out early in the week. Um, not sure how that'll if, or how or if that'll change as the season starts. So, stay tuned on that. But uh, we will see you again next week.